Well, I'm a dancer, teacher, choreographer, and from childhood, I learned dance. In my family, dance was already there. My older sister was a dancer. So when I was born, I saw really a wonderful Bharatanatyam happening in the house itself. So since then, I wanted to be a dancer. My father was very much interested. My all brothers were very much interested. So we were that way culturally. And in those days, there were no school in India. So teacher used to come to teach my sister at home. So really, I was in lap of my mom, and I must have seen the good Bharatanatyam dance that time onwards. Then I learned by myself, so that been, that is my older sister taught me for a long time. I learned from many other teachers. I did my, and that's how, when I was in the school, I wanted to become a doctor and dancer. And I thought that every day, during the day, I'll do my practice and other thing, and evening I will have my clinic, and everything will work out. But then, one day my father sat with me and said that, look, you have to decide, both are demanding career. So then I decided, to be a dancer, and uh, immediately my father said, that's great, sure, we don't mind that at all, but then concentrate on that. But dance is very physical, so you have to have some degree with you in case something goes wrong with the, even the, and especially Indian dance, even the baby finger gets uh, hurt, I can't do my mudras and I can't perform. So that's the reason. So then I did my uh, visual arts degree uh, from JJ School of Arts, uh, and uh, but concentrated on dance, and I learned another dance forms also, Odissi and Bharatanatyam uh, or Kuchipudi. So this way, I was master of three styles, and uh, very soon I was dancing in all big festivals in all over India, and um, it was a very hectic life I was living, but very enjoyable life uh, with my gurus and my musicians. I was traveling. So when uh, Rasesh Bhai got Fulbright scholarship and he came here, my all other family wanted to come this side, but not me. That was a big struggle when they all asked me to come here. I said, what I will do there as an Indian dancer in Canada? <laughs> I don't want to go there. And, um, but I wanted to do the research work because in India that time they used to say that uh, if you dance one style, then you can't do other style, it will get spoiled your one line, uh, style also. <coughs> and I did and nothing happened, so I wanted to see then, let's see, we all use ballet dancer, use body, we use body, what's the difference then? They can jump high and we go in arm and lower, what is the problem? What is the way anatomically we use? And being a, a visual artist, Anatomy was a compulsory subject that we had to learn. So I, I wanted to come here for a few months and uh, talk to ballet dancers and how they do and I do that my research work I wanted to do. And so first time when I came here, when almost all my family members moved here for their own uh, what careers, what they wanted to do, I came only for three months and um, vis visitors visa I came. I did not want to stay. So, and, um, but Rasesh Bhai had asked me to bring all the music and everything, and if I show to ballet dancer my dance, then only they can tell me something. So I gave, Rasesh Bhai organized a program, and I showed that, and since then, immediately York University offered me to teaching uh, position kind of thing, and uh, people came and asked me for the classes, and uh, things started moving very much. Uh, I realized that Canada was becoming, in 70s, early 70s, multiculturalism was very much spreading here. So people started asking me for five minutes dance here and five minutes. And that time onwards, I had decided that no, this is an art form which I am doing. In case also if I perform, I have to keep performing for my mainstream way, absolutely keeping the respect of it. And then, um, yes, there is a story that I did not want to stay, but immigration officer, when I went for the work permit, he convinced me and he said, Canada needs people like you, you have to be here. <laughs> and then finally I convinced, and I have went to India, finished my all commitment, and came back and settled here. And now I have 40 years school, 72 I started the school. So my school is 40 years, I have a company which I perform. I have performed all over Canada for many times. York University gave me honorary doctorate in 92, and now from 93 onwards, the councils and everyone, Canada Council, Ontario Art Council, we get operating grants. And 
we perform everywhere as a Mankataka dance company. Amazing. And I have created a generation of dancers. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. OK, Amber, you're up. <laughs> Well, I'm truly humbled to be here sitting on this panel with such accomplished women, and I only hope that I can have such accomplishments. I'm here to basically share my perspective as the daughter of uh, Nina, mom, um, uh, what it was like to grow up with such a strong female role model. I, am, uh, I have an undergrad in business and a master's in journalism, so I'm not an Indian doctor, and uh, she taught me that that's okay and she supported me in sort of the career that I that I wanted to choose and she continues to support me as I try to advance myself so hopefully I can provide some insight into what it was like to grow up with sort of an unconventional mother. <laughs> okay that's great thank you so much thank you all for your perspectives and uh, you may not be an Indian doctor but we have one at this front table that's going to soon be she's only grade four right now Quinnam's daughter put your hand up no Sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass you. But um, hopefully one day you'll be my doctor. I think you'll be very good. Now, speaking of, um, of Punam, let's, let's actually start the discussion with you, if you don't mind. Um, I wanted to talk to you specifically, because you were included uh, on the top 40 under 40 list in uh, 2005. Uh, so I wanted to know from you, how important is it to reach one goal, one's goals at uh, a young age? And do you think uh, being a woman has, has made it difficult for you to achieve your goals? I think those are both uh, great questions. I think it's important to, uh, to have goals, to set goals for yourself and try really, really hard to, uh, to achieve them. Uh, in my case, I was uh, very young when I, when I went to, uh, to undergrad and went to law school and then articled and went and did my um, master's at, uh, at Harvard and got an offer to teach at, um, at Osgoode in my, in my kind of mid-20s. And so when I started teaching at Osgoode, my first, um, my first class, I remember that there were uh, students in the class who I had gone to high school with um, who were in the same grade as me. So it was, it was, a, it was an interesting experience. I, I, I felt like I was uh, just a little bit ahead of them. And, um, and uh, so there were many challenges, but I think it is important to have goals and it's important to try really, really hard to, uh, to achieve them. Um, you know, could I, looking back, could I have you know, slowed down a bit? Possibly, but you know, I think I think kind of that that um, that drive really makes me who I am uh, today. In terms of your um, second question about um, being a woman and has it made it more difficult to uh, to reach my goals? I think it's in some sense made it uh, more complicated, more interesting. So um, you mentioned Jaden, who's here today. My mom is also here today. I also have two other younger daughters, Amaris and Shiloh, who are at home, who don't meet the age 10 requirement for this, uh, for this event. So I think, um, and this goes, I'm sure, to a theme that we will talk about in terms of work-life balance. So I think uh, achieving my goals gets more interesting when I have to also think about um, my kids' schedules, my kids' kind of school week, um, and everything else uh, related to the, the family structure. Great answer, thank you. Uh, Nalini question for you, if you don't mind. Um, this is actually about boards, because we, we talked a little bit about this. We kind of addressed this. But you, you sit on several. You've represented uh, several boards uh, in various different uh, spheres over the years, uh, young men and women of Asian descent, not just women, men also look up to you uh, for, for uh, the, all the things you've done for inspiration. Um, what advice do you have for women out there about getting involved in volunteerism? Also, um, you know, sitting on boards, how, how does one even, even get to that level and, and is able to do that? Um, give, what should they avoid? So I'll throw all that at you and okay. let, you, let you take it from there. Okay. 